Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. I'm Jim Hutchinson, New Jersey, Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine, and this video forecast for the weekend ahead is coming to you on Thursday, April 7th, the date of the New Jersey Marine Fisheries Council meeting, where hopefully we will find out the last and final regulations for 2022 summer flounder, black sea bass, and of course, porgies. But before we look at those final, final options, did I not tell you last week, did we not say that you were going to see a 50 pound striper in this week's video forecast? Well, how about a 67? Indeed, Dan Radman, a fisherman subscriber from Connecticut, uh, he's actually one of Toby Lipinski's fishing buddies. He drove through New Jersey last week to get to the upper Chesapeake where he put a Rapala Super Shad Rap Deep Swimmer Fire Tiger down for this monster bass, 52 and a half inches long with a massive 32 inch girth. By using the length times girth times girth divided by 800 formula, that's 67.2 pounds. An incredible fish that's still out there swimming around in the upper Chesapeake. But what about New Jersey? New Jersey 50s. I have nothing concrete of yet, but I do have a couple that are certainly getting closer. Uh, in fact, Stockton University professor Adam Aguiar, who you can read about in the April edition of the Fisherman Magazine, he sent this Delaware River snapshot. It was a fish that taped out to 43 and 3 quarters inches with a 29 and a half inch girth. By that formula, length times girth times girth divided by 800, that fish goes 47 and a half pounds. We're getting closer. Now, a lot of folks are checking in from that Delaware River stretch in recent days. In fact, Gabe Vincenti, he showed off a 40-incher he caught and released from somewhere in Salem County this week using a blood bag. That's those blood worms wrapped up in tool. Andrew Hexer sent me this photo of a big striper caught on Tuesday this week. It was from soaking bloodworms off Oakwood Beach, also on the Delaware River. And by all accounts, it looks like those spawning striped bass are up the river, moving up the Delaware to get into a little bit of spring loving. Meanwhile, on the Raritan Bay, where I'm fully anticipating getting some much bigger jumbo style fish coming up, we're really still waiting for those big fish. A few sizable ones in the mix, but mostly it's been, a, uh, it's really been the most consistent plug bite in the region thus far, uh, plenty of locations are holding fish along the Bay Shore at some point, at some point in the tide, sometimes day, sometimes night. Talking to buddies this week, you really don't always pinpoint where those fish are right now because of the, the structure on the Raritan Bay Shore, but a good plug and bite. Kayakers and boaters, of course, have found better action by spreading out throughout the big bay there looking for fish. Paul Marzola was aboard Mution with Captains Alan Lee and Nikki De Janeiro, as well as mate Daryl the Creature Gofrida. They enjoyed great action using the Nomad Design Ver Vertrex. That new Vertrex uh, lure, that was in the bunker pattern. The crew estimated this bass at somewhere around 35, 40 pounds or so, but Paul said they wanted to release as quickly as possible to avoid any additional stress on that fish through taping it, measuring it, trying to get a scale. So good fish though, Paul, well done. Steady rain in the forecast on Thursday, April 7th, east winds 20 to 30, so I thought it was a good day to sit back here at the office, get caught up on my deadlines. Don't forget, for subscribers to The Fisherman Magazine, we are back to our weekly digital schedule. You get that weekly digital emailed to you every Monday. Subscribers get access to the back end through the firewall. And of course, we're back to doing our full complement of reports, North, Central, South Jersey, Delaware, Surf Report, Freshwater. That is posted. We do that every Sunday night, Monday morning. It's posted every Monday. So for the latest reports, you can go to thefisherman.com. We will talk more about some of those stripers, plus the first week of tog action in the Garden State, and we'll take a quick look at Saturday's trout opener. But first, let's delve back into the top story at this point in the season, and that's the 2022 Black Sea Bass and Summer Flounder regulations in the Garden State. Porgy as well, not a lot of talk about that, but they're increasing the size limit by an inch. I think that's what we expect out of Thursday's meeting. That should be the official word and very little, argue, very little to argue about there. But 
In last week's video, I took a shot at what might be the fluke and sea bass options that we'd see on Thursday, April 7th. I think I did a pretty good job. I was pretty close. But I posted links this week at the Fisherman's Facebook page. These are the final, final, final options under review, final approval Thursday night. They've gone through the debate with the advisory council, the advisors in New Jersey who reach out to a bunch of different people and ask for their thoughts. But this is where we stand. For fluke, the advisors prefer the three at 17 and a half inch option, May 21st to September 23rd. I can live with that. Drop a half inch size, more fish in the box, less throwbacks, reduce the mortality, and of course, five extra days of season. But there are other options in that mix as well, including a couple of rather tight slot options that would provide some extra days of fishing. Again, though, two of those fish in your daily bag would have to be in that slot. 16 and a half to 17.99 or 17 to 17.99 inches. Meanwhile, keeping the same size and bag as last year would result in a whole bunch of extra days, but it doesn't address the size issue for a lot of back bay, river, and shoreline surf casters. But your voice matters on Thursday, so if you have a preference, that's the time to chime in. In terms of black sea bass, it looks like the advisors prefer the 828 10 bag limit for 2022. That pretty much keeps the size limit effectively the same as in 2021, but we have to give up some bag limit while adjusting the season a bit. That little closure there between October 20th and November 1st, that leaves me a little worried. Three out of the four options appear to have some type of little mid-season closure there in the fall, so that could be a game changer for a lot of folks. But option three there offers a few lost days and an increase in size across the board at 13 inches, but the bag stays the same, and I don't see a mid-season interruption. Again, at the end of the day, or at the end of the night on Thursday, April 7th, it's gonna be up to you. This virtual government experience I know is an abomination as you've seen in my weekly column this week, the editor's log. We know what happened in 2021 with this virtual nonsense, but your voice does make a difference. So I would encourage you, those with a strong opinion on what the limits should be for Fluke and Seabass this year to log in. Register uh, to, to go to that meeting I've got the links for you, the registration information at the description, in the description box below on our YouTube page. Oh, and while you're rooting around YouTube, of course, make sure you like the video and hit the like button. And if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. Folks asking about striped bass out front. Well, on Monday morning, the folks at Grumpy's in Seaside said a few short stripers are whacking at paddle tails out there in the surf. That's a good sign. Our South Jersey field editor, Anthony Califano, gave a full report this week at the full uh, at the fisherman.com, Atlantic and Cape May County. He said the majority of striped bass action there in the southern part of the state is out back, small fish, but along the sod banks, along the bridges, and back in the rivers. That's been pretty much the same throughout the region. Gina at Dockside Cafe there in Tuckerton, she let us know that there are stripers being caught out there in Tuckerton Creek. Again, with all these smaller fish in the rivers and bays, you gotta wonder where these big spawning class stripers on the Delaware and Raritan are coming from. Were they sitting down, wintering over in deep holes someplace? Did they come in from the offshore grounds? I don't know. Bobby Matthews, Fisherman's Den, Belmar, said surf fishing is starting to warm up there, but not where he wants to see it. He said there should be more action in the coming weeks. Talking about that Monmouth County stretch out front, he did say winter flounder action is still slow, but blackfish are starting to bite. And he said in addition to the reefs and wrecks just offshore, he said Shark River Inlet along the rocks and the Point Pleasant Canal also giving up some fish for toggers. In fact, Frank at Gabriel Tackle confirmed that shoreside tog bite for me over the weekend. He said on opening day last week, he had a total of six fish with a few buddies, all 17 inches, and they were all caught on sandworms. So again, that soft bite with these tog during the, you know, it usually happens in the spring and the fall during different, different times when those tog are inshore and in the back. It's not just the, the, the green crabs, it's also some of those worms. Although Fred Macy said, let me know that he and his son Freddie were out around Absecan Inlet on Sunday. They were using green crabs. They were fishing anywhere from the inlet to six miles out and back. 
said it was a little bit sporty, but it paid off. New Jersey trout season opens up this Saturday, April 9th. Don't forget your license. Don't forget your trout stamp. Get out there shoulder to shoulder with your best new friends for the opener Saturday morning. The April edition of the Fisherman Magazine has the full rundown of trout stocking efforts in New Jersey. Also updates on Delaware and Pennsylvania as well. There's a great event at the Jersey Shore this Saturday out there at Spring Lake with the Shark River Surf Anglers. That's their 20th anniversary youth fishing contest on the opening day of trout season. I'll be out and about myself along that Mercer Avenue stretch with camera in my hand looking to photograph that jumbo fish that's going to win the big trophy on Saturday. I had a little fun little correspondence with Governor Murphy in his office this week. We'll talk more about that and the New Jersey Marine Fisheries Council. Just about two minutes, 20 seconds away. But first, let's get a Pensy Trout update and a report on Shad Watch 2022 with my friend George, the Pocono Outdoors guy. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, things got off to a crazy start. You know, it's been a, a cold, a windy, a rainy, and even snowy opening to the trout season. But that didn't deter too many people from getting out. I want to take a moment to thank everybody that sent me pictures of their opening day catches. It was great to see so many people out getting fish despite, despite the, pure, uh, the poor conditions. I mean, it was really nasty, but we did see a lot of people out on the water. Now, a few people did score big, I'm going to tell you. Um, we had Chris Johnson sent me a couple uh, pictures of his young fellas, uh, young Mason and young Matt, both out hitting the waters, getting into some great fish for the opening of the youth tournament season. Uh, thank you, Chris, for sending those in. Always love seeing those young folks getting into fishing. That's a promising uh, career ahead if they stay on the water. Now, a couple other good ones. We had Matthew D. Colombo getting himself a really nice brookie out of the Albrightsville area. And Jacob Fogel, I'll tell you, this is a beautiful golden rainbow. He got out up near Catawissa, I think he was fishing, but some good fishing up there. Now our good friend Eric Goodstall, of course, he gave us those great tips last week, uh, getting into some uh, some golden rainbows as well. Also a really nice brook trout. Now Eric also said a uh, tip for this week, if you guys are out hitting some of those stock trout, those egg patterns are being real productive over the past week, so try that if you're getting out. Now also, um, the Shad Watch. Guys, things have not been real good this past week. Again, we had that rain, the snow, and the cold weather. Well, that really gave them a case of lockjaw. Uh, last I heard that the river is still full of fish, which you're not going to get much. Those high water flows are kind of pushing them back down river a little bit. Uh, we have some more rain this Thursday, so that could make things difficult for the next week or so. We'll have to keep an eye on the water levels of the river and the temperatures to see how that shad bite's going to go. But we'll definitely keep you updated for the shad watch as we move forward. Now, also got a, a nice picture in from our friend Jen Wong. He says he's not chasing the trout and he's not chasing the shad. He's out chasing some walleye. And there is definitely some wa good walleye fishing out there in New Jersey. So, guys, if you don't want to chase the trout or the shad, go get some walleye, okay? Well, I hope you guys have a great week. Get on those fish from Pennsylvania. I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. Power baits, salmon eggs, uh, trout magnets, spinners. Can't wait. April 9th, trout season opens in New Jersey. Lock it in. Again, fluke and sea bass in New Jersey will get finalized Thursday, April 7th, New Jersey Marine Fisheries Council. It's a virtual meeting, 5 o'clock. You're going to need to register if you want to chime in. You can just Google New Jersey Marine Fisheries Council and you will find that meeting. You can also go to the bottom of this YouTube page. I've got it all in the description. Also, go to thefisherman.com. Find my editor's log for the week called Virtual Nonsense. It's got all the details there. Remember, council will review the advisory committee's options. Advisors have their preferred options and their secondary options, but it's gonna be up to you. There are a lot of folks that really want something specific. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of polls on social media and some websites and people are trying to gin up support for what they want and trying to gather the input. But I'm telling you, if you want something particular, uh, specific with regard to black sea bass and summer flounder, you gotta log in uh, to that meeting to chime in on what you want. We've gotta sit through until council goes to public comment. I don't know if we're gonna see some virtual show of hands, I'm not sure. As you're no doubt aware of, you've heard me ask the question at previous council meetings, the council is short. Two members, a member of the general public and also one of the recreational fishing representatives. Those two seats have been open for probably 15 months. I was finally able to get an answer from Governor Murphy's office 
as to the status of these two missing public advisors, two appointment possibilities in his appointment office I have found out for the last 15 months. I was able to track that down, go back to the governor's office and said, hey, these, these names have been in your office now since 2020. Anything to say? The answer is what you'd expect from a politician, a condescending, foul-tasting word salad. Here's what he says. The governor's office made seven appointments to the board in the second and third quarters of 2020. There are two vacancies for which candidates are consistently taken under consideration. The board is meeting with a quorum. The governor's office does not comment on specific appointments before they are made. Now stare at that quote, if you could, for just a moment, and consider this. As per the council's administrative guidelines, council membership is set by statute. That's law, state law. It's to consist of 11 members, nine appointed by the governor. Those nine governor appointed members include four, four recreational fishing reps, two active commercial fin fishermen, one fish processor, and two members of the general public. The other two seats are held by members of the Shellfish Council. <sighs> Being short one sport fishing representative means that commercial fishermen hold a five to three majority on that council. And of course, since the chairman, Captain Dick Herb, is a sport fishing representative, but he's chair, so he can't vote, that means the commercials outvote the, the recreationals five to two. A term for a council appointment is three years. But members of the council will continue to serve until their time expires and beyond until a successor is appointed or until they're officially reappointed. I think that's what King Phil means by whining about, we made seven appointments to the board in the second and third quarter of 2020. What do you want? Hey, sorry to bother you, Governor, uh, this loathsome democracy stuff. But under state statute and administrative guidelines, the governor's appointment office is tackled with reviewing these council memberships for changes or, uh, or, or reappointments every single year. So basically what the governor is saying here is, hey, look, I already did this junk two years ago, so why don't you just leave me alone? You only need six members of the, for a quorum anyway. A quorum of six, I remind you, governor, five of those members are commercial fishermen. So with as much nicety as I possibly could muster, I went back to the governor's office to ask, listen, at the very least, if you can't give me more details, can you at least provide a time frame on when potentially those missing seats could come out of the appointment office? And here a direct quote is the governor's official response. We will not be commenting further at this time. And this is the way the governor's office responds to a media question. I mean, isn't this really just another way of saying, hey, Jimmy, thanks. Uh, hey, how about you plant one right here, my pal? There, this won't be the last you've heard of this. No, sir, Governor Murphy. Not that you care. I doubt you do. But at this point, the gloves are officially off. The Fisherman's Coastal Kayak Clash. You want to clash? Get involved in the Coastal Kayak Clash. It's back again for 2022. It kicks off on May 1st. You could win big this season. You could plant yourself into a brand new Hobie Mirage Outback. The big news to share about this year's CKC is the fact that we have striped bass as one of the special species. That's right, you can go out and catch and release a striped bass and use that long measurement in May for your chance to win a brand new Hobie Mirage Outback. I'll leave you this week with New England Edition editor Dave Anderson, who has more details on the Coastal Kayak Clash. And you're in contention for that brand new kayak. As far as the contention that comes on Thursday night at the New Jersey Marine Fisheries Council meeting, we'll cover all of that next week right here at thefisherman.com. Hey guys, it's Dave Anderson from the New England Edition. I just want to fill you in on some of the things that are going on with the Coastal Kayak Clash this year. If you're not familiar with the Coastal Kayak Clash, or the CKC as we like to call it here at the Fisherman, it is a season-long, subscriber-only, multi-species kayak tournament where anglers compete in eight species categories to accumulate enough points to win the whole thing. It runs concurrently with the Dreamboat, so from May 1st to November 30th, and it is a marathon. Um, it, it, and it's super competitive and super exciting, but it takes a lot of dedication and a lot of skill to win this thing. So in addition to 
the Hobie Mirage Outback kayak that we're giving away, to the Helix 9 Chirp Fish Finder that we're giving away from Hummingbird, uh, to all the reels from Penn that we're giving away, or the Fenwick rods that we're giving away. In addition to all that and the other prizes that I, that I haven't even mentioned yet, um, you're also going to get a boatload of bragging rights because it really does take a lot of dedication and skill to win this thing. Something else that's very exciting about the 2022 Coastal Kayak Clash is that we've taken sea robin off the list of eligible species and we've added striped bass. Some people may see this as a controversial move, but I don't see it that way and I'm going to tell you why. Um, kayak fishing is unique because in no other style of fishing is releasing a fish easier or faster than it is when you're basically floating on a log. Um, so, you know, picture this. Here I am, I'm sitting on my kayak, I got my nice striper on, right? I'm going to pull this thing up onto my lap. I'm going to have my ruler ready, right? I'm going to take my picture. And then what do I got to do? I lift one leg, the fish falls in the water, that fish is back swimming, I'm back fishing. Um, I think it's going to be a great thing for the tournament. And, um... I also remind you, this is a harvest optional tournament. You know, almost, I would say, I ran this thing last year, and I would say better than 50% of all the species and fish that were ent entered into this thing were released. And um, that's going to be the same deal for stripers, because really, almost all the fish that are entered into this thing, all, all the stripers anyway, that are entered this into this thing are going to be released because they're going to be over the slot limit. Um, and releasing fish on a kayak doesn't take very long at all. And, you know, I think this is going to be a very exciting thing. It's going to bring in new fishermen. It's going to bring in a new, uh, it's going to bring in a new segment of anglers. And it's just going to make the thing even more competitive and even more exciting and with a new wow factor because we're going to see some really big fish entered. Um, I'm looking forward to this thing kicking off. I'm looking forward to seeing the fish that you guys enter. And I'm hoping I'm going to see your name on the list. Good luck this year.